Hello, um, are we awake? Yes, good. So my name is Pirita Chunsen. I'm uh, from Bergen, um, not originally, we come to that. And I'm going to tell a story of Knut, and who is Knut, we're going to find out, and uh, how it was to, or is, to change an organi cha organization to more agile in a very non-agile environment. So, let's start. A little bit of history. Uh, that's me. I'm from Finland originally. And I'm going to tell you a fun fact that is only functioning here today. Tomorrow, by the date, I met my husband in Berlin 25 years ago. Isn't that a fun fact? <laughs> uh, my husband, he is from Norway. And as the story goes, I moved uh, with him to a place called Bergen. He's not from there either. Uh, he's from South uh, Norway, but he found a job there, and so did I, so we moved there. That's uh, over 20 years ago. And uh, this is Bergen, seen from the mountains. Uh, the city in there, in the mid middle, it's surrounded by seven mountains, very high, very majestic. And uh, me coming from Finland, there, there is no mountains like this, so I fell in love. Has any one of you been in Bergen? Yes, so you have seen the mountains, and it's, it's really nice. So, um, uh, the Norwegians, they, they love hiking and skiing and everything in the nature, so, um, and so did I. I learned to love it, and uh, we do go on hiking on these mountains quite often. But enough of that. Um, so, story of Knut. Knut is uh, as a name, as a man's name in Norway. And who is Knut? Um, Knut is several persons. And this is a group I've been working with uh, almost three years now. And uh, it's a lot of people. You see we have different kind of settings. We have been working a lot with the Agile and learning to do it and what it is, what it is not. And uh, all these people, these are my colleagues, and all of them are part of the Knut story. But there is one original Knut. It's him. Uh, he inspired me to tell this story. Uh, it's a kind of a retrospective, because we are not done. Uh, we're never done. It's a transformation. It's a journey. journey. Uh, but Knut, he's a developer. Old school, and uh, doing Delphi for many, many, many years. Uh, really good, and he was uh, really nice to talk to. First, a kind of an introvert, he didn't want to talk that much, and then he opened up, and then he started to telling me how the change has been for the last years. So, uh, and when I talked to him, I started to, to listen to the others as well around him, and I did hear this, how they did experience this kind of a change. It's not only organizational change, but also the technology, the architecture, everything changed at the same time. So, how it was before this agile idea came in. <clears throat> there was this one guy, he was the, the leader of the IT uh, department in this big company. Uh, it's a group of several companies, and this was the centralized IT. He had basically a uh, one-to-one uh, relationship to all the developers and the IT personnel. So everything went through him, and uh, the, the IT department was kind of a black box. Uh, I've been told you could send their ideas or your wishes, what you wanted them to do, and, and sometime something came back, and then you get a bill. But what happened inside? Nobody knew. <laughs> so. Um, they had everything on-prem. They used Delphi, as I said. So uh, that was, uh, that was uh, predominant there. And then the clients, or the, the, the daughter companies, what you call them, they were outside the circle, kind of. Uh, kept a bit outside. And uh, also another fun fact, uh, as we heard in the, in the keynote, uh, if your organization is old and it doesn't work in very agile ways, your uh, system architecture often remi uh, reminds you 
of the organizational architecture. And that is true. Today we are moving something we call the middle layer. And it's, it looks exactly like this. You have lots of uh, applications and they go through with one, one central application and then they connect to the others. So it looks exactly this. this. And it was built at this time. Uh, you see the organizational picture here. So uh, somebody told me when I talked to these people, they said, I don't, I'm not sure if it's a joke or if it's a, if it's a real thing, that they could come in the morning and the, the boss was there giving you the, the yellow notes, fix this line in this code base. <laughs> <laughs> and, they, and they were like, okay. So they never got the whole picture. So lots of these developers, they were doing the small parts and uh, they, they didn't get the whole picture how everything is holding together. Some of them did work very close with the customer. And they, uh, but kind of a challenge is that they, they made all the changes that the customer wanted. So those systems today, they're extremely complicated. And now we're moving up to the cloud. It's difficult to get them up. So, after a while, I think it was in around 2018, um, there was this sense of urgency in the, in the top leadership team. There has to be something done because uh, the time to market was really, uh, really slow and uh, we, we did need more data. Uh, it has to be a um, decision based on data, not just a tummy feeling, how it's going to go. So all of this uh, uh, created this um, change. We had to have an organizational change, we have to change our systems, and we have to do something about it to, to be more ready for the future. So uh, top level decision. We have to be agile, and we have to go cloud first. Okay, that's great. They felt it. They, they were really like, oh, we have to do something, or we, we're done in a couple of years. Um, so they, they made a new organization for the whole IT, uh, and they created this kind of a system. They call it divisions, and uh, the, the idea was to be product organized in some in some time. The, we didn't manage it at the first try. It was still kind of, a, how to say, based on grouping, like here is the front-end people, here is the back-end people. So it wasn't anything like a product where you should have the whole uh, technology stack in one team. But at least change was done. Um, they also decided that uh, nothing should go through one person, so uh, they introduced a system to get all the, the needs and the wishes and incidents uh, together uh, to these uh, developers and the teams. So this was done. And uh, also the leadership team, they, uh, they talked a lot to other companies that had done these kind of changes. They also talked to Microsoft and uh, Gartner and, you know, all these big, big uh, players. And they got, got the message that you need to have teams, you need to have framework, and then you need to have change agents, um, agile coaches. So then I got hired. <laughs> Lucky for me. Um, great. I realized quite fast that we don't manage with one person. It's not, uh, it's not good. I think we were approximately 70 people in this whole organization, so it's not a big one, but still. Um, but I found a couple of other persons that were interested in the Agile and wanted to be with me and be kind of a change agents there. Um, so we started taking uh, more uh, courses and then learning it to the others um, uh, in internal meetings as, you, as we saw the pictures. We had workshops and we were discussing what it means. Um, my mistake was that I never challenged the leadership team. Why did you say that we have to go agile? I never challenged them to ask, why do we need to go agile? Why is that so important? So, uh, because I just assumed that it was 
um, there was some kind of a justification for that, and, uh, and that the, it was important to be agile, and that was explained to everybody. Um, but it showed that it wasn't. Um, I also have to say one thing. Uh, none of these decisions are made because somebody wanted to be um, nasty or something. They have made all the decisions because of what they thought was the correct thing to do and based on the information they had on that time. So they just knew something has to be done. They heard some experts. Let's try this. So, okay. So here I come in, and then I was like, okay, how can we help this organization to change? And um, how is it going, basically? Um, then I met Knut, and um, there was one of our clients. They had this old Delphi system, and it had to uh, move to, to live in somewhere else, because we're moving away from on-prem servers and, uh, and systems. So they, they sent us an order or wish to, uh, that we could help them to, to do it in some other ways. They didn't want any change in functionality. They just wanted to have it in new technology. So then I said um, there was this team of developers, Knut also, somewhere. I can't remember where is Knut. And I suggested them, let's try this in agile ways. Because no, no one of them, they knew anything on Agile, basically. Said, so, let's try Scrum. As it's written, we are not going to change so much. So there isn't that much um, unknown things. Something, yes, because uh, they haven't done this before. Um, but uh, we have a scope. We, we, can, we can use that as a, as a frame. And, um, and they were like, OK. Let's try it. But still, we don't see the, the need of being agile at all. We, we could just jump into it and code it, and we're done. I said, OK, um, what we do need is the, the client. We need the users, we need the clients, and close uh, work with them to get to know what they really need. So we invited them to our team. and. Uh, this then became uh, the dream team, I would call. And we started doing everything as it says in the Scrum uh, handbook, how you should do it. So we had all the ceremonies, and we, we did all the exercises. We did use Azure DevOps as a tool. And uh, everything, all, all of this was new. Also, the uh, infrastructure we're going to move into, the Azure, and the front-end um, technology, that was all new for all these people. So they weren't just learning uh, how to be agile, they were also learning new uh, programming languages and technologies. The client was really scared in the beginning because they only wanted the waterfall, they wanted reports in, and they just uh, were like, oh, no, no, we are not going to involve in this, because if we say yes to something and it doesn't work anyway, oh, who's going to pay for that? <laughs> so, so um, but, but then um, in the end, I, I got them with us and said, come to the demos. You don't have to say yes to anything. Just come. We'll explain what we do. Yeah, but we don't understand code. I said, I don't understand code. I'm not an IT person. Well, but I still love to see what the developers are showing to me because they're really passionate about it. And uh, sometimes you hear something that tricks something, that you start to ask questions or you give some more information that we need to know to get an even better program. So they came in and uh, started participating more and more. And in the end, if I didn't send the invitation to demo on time, they were asking me, where is the invitation? We want to come there. So it was OK, but it wasn't perfect. It wasn't perfect Agile, perfect Scrum. But it was something to, to try to teach the developers that Scrum is nothing scary. And it is, uh, it is one of the um, frameworks that you can use. And also trying to show them why uh, the leadership team probably thought that agile ways of working are the best. So, yeah, so we did, um, uh, did work together. 
uh, no much of a psychological safety in the beginning, but it came. And then I started talking with Knut and his colleagues, and then they were telling me what had happened behind my back and everything, and they were like, yeah, we heard they're going to hire an agile coach, and why do we need them? They can't even code. <laughs> That's no use. And agile ways of working, okay, we're just going to get some new managers in telling us what to do. And I said, yeah, but I don't tell you what to do because I have no idea what to do. So you have to tell me because you are the expert in this. And uh, they were like, yeah, we were really surprised. And um, now I'm okay with it that we are changing the way of working. All right. So... We, we did work, uh, work together for a while, and uh, the team worked well together, I guess, and um, at, at least what I felt and what they said. So that was, um, that was great. So, uh, as I said, I started talking with several people after Knut told me how he had experienced all this from one, um, how to say, captain to being more of a teams and uh, yeah, yeah, agile ways of working. So I started talking with several people and I asked them all the same questions. How have you experienced this journey? What has been difficult? What do you like about it? And uh, yeah, there were several questions I did ask them and quite many of them answered the same things. Uh, many of them said that the language was really bureaucratic in the beginning. The first time they were told that we're going to change, uh, we're going to be more agile, uh, it was just kind of a uh, sea suit mumbo jumbo and high words, and uh, developers were sitting there like, and why are we doing this? And nobody knew. Um, they also felt it was somebody else's plan. They weren't part of it. They were never asked how they experienced the, the working day and the working environment before. So just one day, yes, we're going to change the whole organiza organization and here is the plan. So they never felt that, like they were part of the plan. It was really unclear. As I, as I said, when I was hired, they said we got... Uh, we got this tip, you have to get an Agile coach. We don't know what an Agile coach does, but we need one. <laughs> so that was quite unclear. Uh, but it was the same for the developers and IT personnel as well. It's like, okay, how, how is this going to work? Um, confusion, of course, if it's unclear. Yeah. So what they di did, they continued the same way, basically. Um, they didn't care about the plan that much. They definitely didn't see what's in it for me. That was so clear when, uh, when I talked to them. They were like, oh, it's going to be a new system we have to, to work with, and it's going to be uh, some new middle management, maybe. That's what they thought that the, the Scrum Masters and the Agile coaches are going to be. And uh, yeah, it's just going to be more stressful. Can I just talk to the client directly and get done with it and don't be bothered with the architecture or whatever. I'm just going to fix it here and now. Uh, <laughs> it led to this kind of thinking, them and us, because the teams now were like, we're going to deliver this, and, uh, and then, but they are stopping us, the other teams, because it wasn't any uh, multi-faceted um, teams, it was just a team for one type of person. So. It wasn't very, uh, very good results in the beginning uh, for the picture. Um, then somebody been, uh, started telling me that they were tired of change. Um, they had been working in a company for several years and that they experienced that there was changes all the time. Um, and this, uh, this was something that they, they didn't want. They wanted to have something safe, something that uh, they, they just... Um, uh, belong to, and not, uh, not everything changes all the time. Like Eduardo said, you have to embrace the change. It's the only constant thing in here in the world. But uh, they didn't feel like that. Um, and then, of course, you get indifferent. Because, uh, okay, if nobody can tell me how this is going to work, 
I'm not going to bother to trying it. So, yeah. Um, but happily for me and uh, for the others who wanted us to be more agile and want, want to be agile, there was people like Knut, but also others. They told me that they were really curious about it. They wanted to test it out and to see how it goes, if it, if it can help them in everyday work. So, uh, but they were really <laughs> saying that this is going too slowly. We want to run. And uh, some of those people, we, we let them run. They, they did testing uh, with their teams. There were some, uh, some small teams and they said, OK, you can test whatever framework you want, what, what suits for you. And come to tell us if it works or if it doesn't work. And then we can share the knowledge and then somebody else can test it out. Um, and so it was, it was funny to see that how some people, the group of people, they were like, oh, I'm so tired, I don't want to do this. And then there is another group of people and they were like, we, we would like to run faster. And then everything in between. So they were impatient, yes. Um, some of the teams, at least uh, those teams that I was really close uh, working together with, they, they started to get a real good team spirit. But that was my opinion, uh, I'm not sure, uh, but I, th I think it was because we did ceremonies, we did have retrospectives, we, we did have often talks about how the team is functioning as a whole. So, uh, and that also then increased the psychological <coughs> safety. More openness, and then uh, in the end, more and more people say, okay, this change is okay, this is good. But this was the, the word that almost everybody told me when I asked, How do you, what do you think about the change? Everybody did ask, why do we change? What was the reason behind the management group's decision? So that they didn't... Um, oh, they tried to communicate it, but it didn't go through. So, why do we do this? So, what did we learn so far? You remember the picture here? The hiking on the mountains. Uh, Norwegians love it, but they're also very, how to say, uh, careful people. So they have made the Norwegian mountain code. That is excellent for people like me who don't come from Norway. <laughs> you have nine rules how to, do, how to plan your trip, hiking trip, and what to do in there. Very excellent. So when I was talking about this uh, presentation, I was thinking of the... I'm, I'm looking from my, my office windows, I see the mountains, and I was like, yeah, but many of those rules, mountain rules, they fit to this journey. Uh, make it like a rule to remember what to do and what not to do. Uh, so, plan your trip and inform others about the road you have selected. Plan your change and communicate. You can never ever over-communicate. And then check how was it received, how did they understand it, did they do understand it. If you, if you want to make a change, you have to create a sense of urgency. But it doesn't help if it's only you feeling it. You have to also get the others feel it too. Only then you can get them with you and change. You can never ever get everybody with, but get as many as you manage. Adapt the planned route, uh, routes according to ability and conditions. So do it as a team and uh, have a sufficient knowledge and understanding of agility. So uh, when I first talked to the people, there were some teams and they said, we're trying Scrum. And I asked, why do you do Scrum? It's the only thing we heard of. And then I talked to them and I found out that they were DevOps teams. So like, okay, you don't do that much of an unknown work as I think Scrum fits the best if you have to discover something new. Uh, you have to try something else. Yeah, okay, it was, it, it's good, because um, we didn't like Scrum that much. <laughs> so it's not wonder. <laughs> All right, so get the knowledge about it, and, um, and do it as a team. 
not just one single person. Pay attention to the weather and avalanche warnings. Be aware of the surroundings. I told you about the customer. They didn't want to do any Scrum or any Agile because they wanted to have reports and they wanted to know when it's done and how much it's going to cost. Okay, so this is our surroundings, what we have to still today uh, work together with as, as well as we can. Um, be prepared for bad weather and frost, even for short, uh, short trips. So uh, be ready of resistance because it's coming. Um, the rest of the organization is not uh, agile at all. They are very, very much of a waterfall, but there is change happening. And uh, we are going through a huge organizational change. So, uh, so I hope that uh, in the future, the rest of the organization, if not embracing the agile ways of working, at least understands it and lets us do it. Use a map, a compass, always know where you are. So you have to have a plan, but you also need to know where you are in the plan and how you can change the plan if, if need is. So iterate the change as well. Don't plan a five-year change uh, plan. Um, it's never going to go like that. Sometimes suddenly somebody changes his mind and, oh, I don't like this anymore, or, or yeah. So, Hydrate. Don't be ashamed to turn around. I wish I would have asked this question when I, was uh, when I was hired. Why do we need to be agile? Explain it to me, and if they couldn't explain it to me, then I would have recommended them to not going agile. So, change the plan, if necessary, and also be humble. If the organization doesn't change this time, okay, try another approach, try it later on. Uh, we saw in the keynote, it took several years. Now we have been in this uh, journey five years at least. Are we still not there? We, we are doing small changes all the time, uh, but we are not, I can't say that we are agile, but still. It uh, sometimes agile doesn't fit. Conserve your energy and seek shelter if necessary. This is important. I told you some people they were tired of change and some people they wanted to run. You cannot just go with the people who want to run. Of course, I would like to. Yes, I found my tribe. These people want to be agile. Let's run together. But we cannot leave uh, the tired ones uh, behind. So we have to fa find kind of a middle way to, uh, to get, uh, get there. Yes. All right. So that, those were my uh, learnings and our learnings from uh, the journey so far. And uh, what happens to Knut now? Knut did learn a lot of new things during the project. And uh, of course, he cut the... <laughs> cut the proposition he couldn't say no to, so he has moved on. But uh, I talk to Knut sometimes, and uh, he's very happy. Uh, he's, uh, he's very happy he's having a new Agile coach, <laughs> which is making me cry, but <laughs> I'm happy for him. And he's really embracing the Agile ways of working. And he's also learning it to his colleagues and, and telling them why it is good. So basically, he did get the why in the end, but not uh, in the beginning, as uh, we would like to have it. Yes. Thank you. Um, yes. Yeah, so the journey continues. As I said, we others, we're still there and uh, going through even bigger organizational change. The IT is going to be decentralized. So, uh, so it's going to be exciting times. We are moving everything to the cloud. Uh, and uh, that is uh, difficult work, I see, and um, it depends a lot of that, uh, the architecture, architecture and uh, the design and the systems design, it's working together. So uh, we'll see 
how it ends, but at least uh, we are on, the, on our journey. So then I think if we have any questions. Thank you so much for this talk. Um, we don't have any questions in the queue, and there is still nine minutes to yeah. fill the queue. So uh, keep them, <laughs> fill, fill this queue. Um, and in the meantime, I did like the, the, the hiking analogy, this, this hit close to home. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, uh, just to stretch this analogy even further to the breaking point, hiking is not a discipline of sport for everyone. So how, how like at which point do you recognize that maybe this agile transformation is not the sport for this particular team, this particular organization? Could you talk mm -hmm. about, you know, identifying the, the, the point of, yeah, it's time to pick a different discipline of sport? Yes, so um, I have been working in different kind of um, branches before, not, uh, not only IT, but uh, I come from oil and gas, and uh, there is the waterfall approach. Uh, yeah, that's ruling there. And I think that if, uh, if your organization is doing something that you can touch, something that you can plan, it's not probably the agile way of working is the most. Uh, suitable for you, maybe in some part of the organization. But then again, the whole organization must be um, understanding what it is and being able to work together with them. Uh, but um, but if, if you're doing something new, something that you don't know how to get there and you haven't done it before, then agile ways are even, then, then they're okay because you iterate and you stop and you adjust your journey. So, um, so I would say that you should, you should think what you do and then decide where, where to go in your agile journey or in somewhere else. Yeah. That's a very thoughtful answer. Thank you for that. Do we have any <laughs> other questions? Um, oh, that's, 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 that's a nice one. Um, what benefits did uh, doing Scrum bring versus as if it were done the old way? Mm -hmm. Here, the second one at the um, bottom. What I experienced in Scrum way was that, um, and that is not only my experience, that is also one of the comments from the developers. They experienced that they could concentrate on one thing at a time because we had sprints and we decided the sprint goal, and we only took that amount of work into the sprint that we, we estimated we can do. So that was maybe the biggest change for them. They, uh, they didn't jump from one case to another like they used to previously. Um, they actually did finish something on time. And that was the first time for them. So uh, that, uh, I would say, was the, the biggest um, um, yeah, positive, the positive side of uh, using Scrum. Mm. Fantastic. Another question, mm -hmm. and keep them coming. We still have five minutes. Um, have you leveraged any change framework like ADKIR to try to main, minimize change resistance? <laughs> um, not, uh, not before the last half a year, basically. Um, then uh, we, we started uh, using Edgar as well, um, but uh, in the beginning it was just, uh, as I said, it was just a job for me to do, just create the teams or help us to create the teams and give them a framework. And uh, I used my, my first year just to, to, to get through what they're doing and who they are, to then to start thinking, okay, what is the best way of doing this? Uh, but when I, when I was doing this uh, talk and the interviews, then I realized that there is more resistance than I thought. So, uh, yeah, so we took, uh, took that into, into use. Mm. Fantastic. Mm. Uh, I don't see any other questions, so please remember to rate the talk, uh, also on Slido. Mm. And uh, with that being said, thank you very much, Pilita Jonsson. Thank you. Uh,